I'm in Cote d'Ivoire, West Africa. And today we are going on a unseen local seafood tour. We're gonna eat some incredible, rare Ivorian food and I'm gonna share it all with you coming up right now in this video. Hey everyone, it's Mark Weens, and if you're just joining me on this trip, we are in Cote d'Ivoire, which is also known as Ivory Coast in West Africa, traveling through the entire country to eat the best local food. Oh. Yesterday, we went on an ultimate street food tour in Abidjan, eating everything from plakali to vertical barbecue. Today, we'll be eating all seafood. We're starting right here in Abidjan for a local favorite before we continue our journey west along the Atlantic coast. We'll travel deep into a local village to try a rare Ivorian dish and then continue to San Pedro for a seafood feast you don't want to miss. Ah, okay. Oh, bonjour. Salut, bonjour. bonjour. Madame, bienvenue, welcome. Merci, merci beaucoup. Merci, merci beaucoup, merci beaucoup. Merci, merci. Oh, that's a big fish. They specialize here in something called, well, it's the fried fish with achike, and we'll be learning about achike as we start to eat. But they've got just a factory going here. This is the type of place it's gonna get just jam-packed for lunch. So many people, they fry up so much fish. The fish is fresh. It just gets a nice, like, very light coating of flour. Then it deep fries until it's crispy. Oh, okay. Fresh batch of fish. Oh, okay, what type of fish? Fish. What is the what is the type so, of fish? So 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 so, so, so fish. Okay. It is the salt. Oh, and this one is the sole fish. Ah, okay. Oh, nice. Nice. <laughs> Oh, stewed down onions melting with chilies, oh, with tomatoes, I think. Pima? Pima. Okay, that's just fresh green chilies just chopped up. Oh man, chilies in a big way. And I mean, we got here before the lunch rush and it's already starting to get busy, but this is where the, the fish, uh, after it's uh, deep fried, then this is where they distribute it. And I think you can come here and choose your own fish. That's why they have kind of a caution tape here so that you don't get too close. Can you, you can imagine how many people would want to be choosing their fish. Um, you can smell the aroma of onions, the chili sauce that it's going to be served with. Wow. Well, there's that big fish fried. Whoa, wow. This is the acheke. 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 Cassava. And made from, made from cassava, but it's like a very complex process how they make it. Uh, they dry it, they grind it, they steam it, and then it's put through this another process until it's uh, steamed and it becomes this almost like semolina kind of texture to it where you can feel the little grains of it and yet it's like light and fluffy all at the same time. But it's a staple of Ivorian food and it's one of the favorite foods in all of Cote d'Ivoire. 
love that vibrant collection of onions and tomatoes. Oh, and the fresh chilies, yes. Yes, the green chilies. Okay, merci beaucoup. Oh, yes. Let's start with this fish. Fried, crispy, breaded. And normally, normally, so normally you will, oh, you will just dip into the acheke, or will you dip into the, you can dip with the acheke? <laughs> yes, oh yes, she's going in. <laughs> Mmm. Mm. Oh, oh, wow, yeah. Oh. The onions just melt in your mouth. And the achake, it has such a unique texture. It's so fluffy, and yet it's so beady. Like, you feel the beads in your mouth. Um, it's light. It's fluffy. It's kind of, I mean, it's actually very neutral tasting, like semolina. Really good. It goes so great together with that fish. Try some of the sole fish. This is a special fish that they have for us for today as well. The sole, you can kind of mix in with everything, with the green chilies, with the onions, with the acheke. Mix in with the acheke as well. Mm. Oh, wow. Oh, it's so tasty. C'est bon, c'est très bon. <laughs> Very good. I love the combination of the fried crispy fish with the stewed down melt in your mouth onions, with the freshness of the tomatoes and raw onions, and those green chilies are just vibrant and full of flavor. Dip into this sauce tomate. Mix it with the acheke. It's so crumbly. Mm. That tomato sauce is nice too. It's really tart, oily, onions in there. And definitely chilies as well. We're moving on to the next fish. Okay, this is the next. Oh, this one is really soft and so crispy. Look at that, look at that crispy skin. My favorite combination is with those onions and with lots of these chilies. And with a, just mix it all around. Nice, Yes, is that the way to take a bite? <laughs> mm. I think one of the secrets is that onion sauce. That just makes that fish unbelievable. Every fish is different. Every fish has a different texture. Like this, for instance, this fish, it's crispy, but then the flesh of the fish is so silky smooth, it just melts in your mouth. This one is... Ton. 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 Oh, okay. Tuna, okay. Oh, this one is thick. Thick and rich and hearty. Okay. What a meal. And from what I've heard, this is the, the best place in Abidjan to eat acheke and fried fish. Efeo, efeo, c'est tout. C'est tout. Efeo, c'est tout. Voila. <laughs> I think that means it's very, very good in the local baule. Oh, in baule, okay. Oh, in baule. What a dish. What a combination. And they just fry fish here like out of control, just nonstop fish frying. And I think, I mean, the fish is actually fried completely plain, just with that batter. What really gives it the flavor are those sauces and those onions. Mm. Mm. What a meal, I mean, everything is so flavorful, so tasty. Good morning, Mo. Good morning. You ready? Yeah. Rainy day today. Any day today, rainy day, but any day is a good day. Every day eat. is a good day. Any day is a good day to eat. So. All right. <laughs> We started off this morning in Abidjan and then we drove along the coast to a place called Grand Lahu, which is, it was about two hours away and there was just extreme torrential downpour rain to get here. It's sort of cleared, but it's still quite drizzly and it could, the weather could turn at any time, but we're making the most of it. From here, we're getting onto a boat. We are going to a remote 
village and the geography here is also very unique because there's a river there's lagoons and then we're also close to the mouth of the atlantic where they are famous for an ivorian delicacy that you can only get in the village oh here we go we're off and if you look at this area on a map uh, you will see that we're right along the atlantic ocean but there's a number of rivers and estuaries and lagoons that are surrounding the geography here. And so we're heading off into some of the lagoons and some of the water outlets to this remote village. La Upandala is the second largest island in West Africa, according to him. Oh, wow. Yeah. And what, the, what's the, the name of the village we're going to? Uh, La Upanda. La, U, La Upanda. So after about a 15 minute boat ride, we've made it. And I'm not so sure if it's a full island or if it's more of a peninsula, but it's really beautiful, really peaceful. And then of course, because we're on the Atlantic Ocean, but surrounded by lagoons and rivers, that's why there's such a diversity where they're so known for seafood. Oh yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> So just some of the fresh catch of the morning here, oysters, some other like um, shells or sea snails and then also some few small crabs in there as well. Yeah, What's on the menu? That's on the menu. One of the things we'll be eating. Excellent. Yeah. Ah, okay. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. Okay. Bachelet. This one, bachelet. 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 Okay. Oh, palm nuts. Palm nuts, right? Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So we're just walking through the village. People are so friendly and it's really, I mean, it's a really big village, over 5,000 people, but it's like a nice grid uh, surrounded by the sea and lagoons. And we're turning off onto this lane to the house where we'll be cooking and eating. <laughs> ah, okay. We were right at this place. Now. This is your, his, yeah. house. his house. Wow, merci. Awesome. So we've been invited into the house, the compound of our host here. And it's, I mean, we're on the beach, literally. It's all sand, but it's a beautiful, spacious area. We're heading right directly into the kitchen to get started cooking a number of special dishes, some seafood delicacies. And there's this one dish that is so unique to this village. It's only available here. And here's the kitchen. Yeah. Bonjour. Bonjour. So in the kitchen, there's a lot going on. There's a fish grilling. It looks like a big mullet. They have cassava going, which they're grilling and frying. But then one of the main dishes that we came here to eat, a rare Ivorian delicacy from this village, is called la yue. Oh, yeah. And it's in this pot. It's like a fish stew that takes two days to cook. And so this is it here. It's, they've already been boiling it and... I mean, prepared it since it takes two days, it's already ready, but that is a true, a unique delicacy. That stew, it's made with African catfish. And then there's other things going on. Now she's getting started on some of the local um, lagoon crabs. I like having. Oh, nice. So it is, it is for preparing, for, for, voilà. Oh, this is some of the grilled cassava? Okay. That's palm oil? Palm oil goes in? So 
because this African catfish dish takes two days to make, they're just gonna show us in a small pot, and so they've already prepared a big pot, they're just gonna show us in a small pot the ingredients that go in and the first initial stages of it in a smaller pot. So the African catfish goes in, palm oil and onions, and then that, that boils now for? It boils, it drains the water, uh -huh. and then they add on more water. Okay. And then you keep, on, they keep, keep on keep on boiling it. Oh, okay. It for two days, two whole days. Two keep days of that. boiling it. That takes wow. a lot of dedication. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What an incredible, so, unique process. Yeah. yeah. Never heard of a fish dish cooking for two days. Fufu. Yeah. With plantain. We're moving on now to the fufu, which is, this is going to be a fufu yeah. made with uh, boiled plantain bananas and they're about to add in, after she mashes that, yeah. and she's about to add in some of the, the palm oil. Okay, okay. Oh, yeah. Drizzle of fragrant <laughs> palm oil goes in, okay. Oh, and she's really just delicately kind of mashing that. Okay. Okay. So to make it softer. Okay, they add in add, a little bit of that banana boiled juice. Yes. Plantain boiled juice. Yes. Oh man, so that fufu recipe is so good and they take, I mean, just such care in the way it looks and making it into a perfect ball and then smashing it down with two fingers and then drizzling a little more palm oil for the, the presentation. She added a little bit of a paste to it, which smells like it has garlic and onions and chilies in it, some of the, some of the really hot peppers. And then she kind of uh, oh, adds in a little bit more palm oil as well to the recipe. I love that air slicing technique. Also the drizzle from a little bit of elevation. Oh, okay, merci. It's basically the two of the same things. The differences between them is the color that gets yellow because of the the palms, the palm, palm oil, oil that is mixed in with this. One. All right, all right. And this is cassava somula, which is the also known as acheke. It's the national treasure. It's our trademark. One of the staples of exactly, Ivorian cuisine. Exactly. Demonstrating how to. Okay. Donc je je me sers. Je finis mon servi. Donc je prends comme ça la main. First, take some of the acheke. Yeah. And this is cassava, like little acheke, almost like little beads of. Yeah. Of cassava. Yeah. This is the main dish of the. Oh, the African like it's dish. been cooked for two days. Please. You could just see it's melting. I'm gonna take that and then take some of that. Yeah, that soup broth good. with the palm oil. Okay, so he said to you really should mash it in your. Just really. And they're kind of like beads. So you make a make a ball like that and then eat it with the with the with the fish. Oh. Oh, that feels so good in your fingers. <laughs> it's so tender. Oh, what a delicacy. Okay, here we go. That skin. Oh, you can feel how blubbery that, that skin is as well. Really thick. Oh, yes. Oh, and something that they said is that Two days cooking it is the prime amount of time. If you cook it for less time, it's not as soft and tender. Yeah. But if you cook it for a longer time, it sort of starts to like disintegrate and get mushy. Mm -hmm. Two days is the ideal cooking time. Mm -hmm. oh, that's incredible. Look at that texture. And amazingly, it's not mushy at all. It's been simmered for two days and it just holds up. You can even kind of eat the bones, the flavor, the, the texture, the palm oil. Okay, so again, Make a, a ball, mm -hmm. squeeze it. Oh, and now it's getting juicy. But something you can, you can actually feel the, the skin of that catfish has just made it into a, like it's thickened the sauce. Mo, is this something 
that you will find across other parts of Cote d'Ivoire? No, you will not. Okay. Yeah, this, this was worth the trip. This is only here, right, this in this village? This is only here, yeah. Very good. Mm. We're going to try some of the other version. This is the, mm. the one with palm oil mm -hmm. in it already. Yeah. These are the ones we saw on the beach. The ocean snails simmered down. Mm -hmm. um, onions, you see a lot of onions in there, tomatoes, tomatoes. some spices, palm oil. Mm -hmm. This one? Okay. You want some of this? Yes. Okay. Try some of these, these sea snails. That's a big little nugget there yeah. of meat. All right, let's try this out. Mm. Oh, those sea snails are amazing, yeah. The texture is like a little bit rubbery and a little bit chewy, but soft and tender. You taste all those caramelized, simmered down onions. That is so tasty. Oh, merci, merci. Oh, the coconut. <laughs> Washing it down with a coconut. Uh, which came down from the tree just seconds ago. <laughs> oh, that's refreshing. Oh, it's so sweet. Oh, yes, that's the flavor. Okay, cool. Thank you, man. Yeah, no problem. Make it juicy. Anytime. Okay, and I'm gonna mix in? Yeah, mix that in. With some of those snails. Yeah, the snails. Oh, man, yeah. And you get that's so go. much flavor. Mm. That's such a unique way to eat cassava because it has, a, it's like, little beads almost. Mm -hmm. um, it's very textural in your mouth mm -hmm. and it's nice and like moist at the same time. Mm -hmm. And with that palm oil, that gives it a boost of extra flavor as well. You remove that first. Remove the, the skin and the scales, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. I'm gonna go in for some of that, that fresh fish uh, and dip it into the sauce yeah, that includes the, the, the chilies. Yeah. Uh. Oh, wow. yeah. oh, that sauce is unbelievable. Mm. Oh, the fumes of the chili. Mm -hmm. That ak akiba? Ak ak akpi. 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 <laughs> it's a little bit, is it a little bit sour? Yes. A little bit sour, but like has this depth of flavor that's almost unexplainable. Oh, that sauce is incredible. Mm. Oh, that's just, it goes so well together with the fish as well. Oh, then this is what it is. Yeah. That, this is what the. Akpi. They almost look like chickpeas, but they're not chickpeas. No, it's not I don't. It does look like a chickpea or a peanut. Oh. Oh, it tastes like a peanut, like a, like a hazelnut almost. I gotta have another bite of that fish with that. That sauce. Voilà. Mm. Oh wow. <laughs> that sauce, those nuts, outstanding. I mean, the whole meal is just superb. The the catfish, mm. do they normally eat it on special occasions? When the fish is in season, that's when they cook it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Alors, lorsque vous recevez des ox, vos amis sont très importants pour vous. Okay. This is a fish that you that is cooked when you're hosting someone. Mm. So. Because it's the uh, because of the rarity of the fish, I think you can measure your your affection for the for your for your guests. So it's harder uh. to get it. So you went that much in a way. It translates to you going that much harder to please your guests. Wow! To give your best something rare and something unique. Wow! Something. So this is a very special. It's a very special. Very special meal. Meal. Yeah. Thank you. Right. Next up for the crab. Oh, you can see the, the row in it as well. All right, all right, let's try the, the crab next. Uh, and maybe maybe I should pull this. I'm gonna show you how to, okay, yeah. Oh, okay. You crack it open. Oh, the row, there we go. Uh, you yeah. can see the row in there. And then all right, here we go. Scoop it out with the thumb. Yeah. Voila. Voila. <laughs> yes. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, the row is where it's at. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Creamy and so much flavor. It's like the condensed the ultimate condensed flavor of crab meat. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Then with those onions and tomatoes that have been stewed down with that paste. Delicious. Mm. Okay, as you keep on eating that catfish, I mean the, the bones, just get, look at that skin, how thick it is and how soft and tender it is. That's why it's such a delicacy. Mm. 
Mm. Okay, I'm gonna take one of the pieces of the fufu with yeah. the plantain. Yeah. Oh wow, that's that is dense with a little pool of palm oil in the center. Yeah. And then the same, you can put this as another base starch to also eat along with the. So he says it has to go in for more of the more of the catfish. Yeah. Because it has sauce. Yeah. Yes. Oh, that's a big chunk. And maybe just. Yeah. Pour on a little bit of that pour, sauce. Yeah. Is that good? Put a lot of sauce. <laughs> Put a lot of sauce. Yeah, to soften it even oh, okay. More. Oh man, that's sticky and hearty and like you can tell how dense it is. Mm -hmm. This is the Ivorian fufu. 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 Yeah. Let's try this. Yeah. And it's sweet. Mm. <laughs> sweet and starchy. Mm. And you just infused with the palm oil. Oh, that's hearty, nutritious. Delicious. Look at this. This is a pure nugget of the, the catfish. Look how it just it just crumbles. It's so tender. Mm. Mm -hmm. The texture of it is so smooth. And it is kind of dry, so that's why you gotta add a lot of soup, a lot of sauce to it. Um, and then continually just keep rehydrating it, basting it with sauce to keep it hydrated. Okay, we've got one more um thing to try and this is uh fried cassava yeah. with there's a whole plate of mature coconut here yeah you take a bite of the fried cassava and then i'll explain the the meaning of this dish in the culture here you take a bite fried cassava mm. oh it's really sticky and glutinous and crispy at the same time then you take a bite of the coconut mix that and, mm. oh yeah that combination the richness of the coconut, the starchy gooiness of the cassava and the fried palm oil again. The significance of this in the local culture in this village is that many of the people are fisher fishers. And so, I mean, it's a lot of work, labor. They go out fishing, they'll come back and they'll be really hungry. So this is something that can be eaten like as a power snack. You'll be able to get energy, regain the calories. Um, it's filling, hearty. I think you have like fat, and carbs, um, and you can eat this really fast before a full meal is prepared. So well, that's the significance of it in the Avicam tribe. Same thing, fried or grilled cassava. Similar way to eat it. What an outstanding meal. Meal was outstanding the hospitality, the friendliness. Uh, what, a, what a village, what a location, what a meal. But from here, we need to take the boat back and we have a long journey to go because we're on our way down the coastline towards the west to a place called San Pedro. Oh, welcome to San Pedro. And this is the sixth largest city in Cote d'Ivoire. It's also the second largest port, and it's also very famous for fishing. So we're beginning right here at the Central Fish Market. This is where the boats dock, where they arrive with the fresh catch. And this is the wholesale where they have the full seafood supply straight from the boat. And so we're meeting up with Chef Emanuela. We're gonna do a little bit of shopping here, buy some seafood, and then we'll go back to the hotel, her hotel, where she's gonna cook a seafood dish for us. Monsieur, bonjour. Bonjour. So we're here with Chef Emanuela from In Hotel Hotel, and she's gonna take care of us today. She's saying that this is the seaport where they get the fish from the fishermen. All right. And she's Directly from the boats here? Directly from yes. the boats. Okay. The, yeah. Merci, merci. So then a lot of the fishing boats are still traditional wooden fishing boats. They probably also have some more modern fishing boats, but the majority are still traditional. Oh, bonjour. Bonjour. <laughs> yes. Yes, good. Merci. I just love fish markets, the colors, the aromas of fresh, fish, seafood, the seawater in the air. And I just love the traditional boats, the colors, the, the action and energy. Flags. A lot of the boats have Ghanaian and yeah. Liberian flags, right? Yeah, yeah. Because They're actually from those countries, but they came here yeah, to go fishing? they came here to go fishing. Oh, okay, because, okay. Because um, we have the a lot of fish in our fishers. waters. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And it's been like this So colorful. Decades. 
traditionally, I believe, like in a lot of West Africa, is that the men are usually the fishers, and then the women handle the, the selling of the fish and distributing it to the markets. Merci. <laughs> so we just saw the wholesale fish area. There's not too many big fish today, but a lot of a lot of sole, a lot of uh, mullets, some stingrays. We're gonna move over now to the wet market area where I think anyone can come to go shopping for their seafood. Lobster. Okay, uh, that one is huge. Yeah. Red grouper? <laughs> or snapper? Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, a slipper lobster. Yeah, look at that red part. Okay. So it looks like we'll be getting some octopus, some of that fresh octopus, some of the lobsters, local lobsters, and those slipper lobsters, which are really cool. Those, they have like a, they're totally brown in color, and then they have this really bright yellow and red stripe in the center. Bienvenue dans ma cuisine, je vais vous montrer un plat traditionnel roumain, la marmite pêcheur, qui est composé de poissons, fruits de mer et de légumes. On y va pour la recette? Yes, say welcome to my kitchen. Uh, I'm going to show you a traditional roumain uh, dish, where it, which is called the fisherman's uh, soup, uh, comprised of vegetables, uh, fish, and seafood. Okay. Let's go. Tomate concentrée de l'ail. Tomato paste. La tomate. Tomato paste. That's the right. Eh, comment a little bit of water splash and then a little bit of salt goes in. Fresh tomatoes go in. Yes. Okay. Uh, green pepper? Yes. Green pepper, okay. Oh wow, so now whole half of onions go in, okay. And some of the chili peppers. Okay, so all the fresh seafood, well, she starts with a base of fish, um, and then some of that octopus goes in, simmering in that tomato paste, and now maybe a little more seasoning, salt, and pepper goes in. Do a sauce, okay. The shrimps, okay. The lobsters. So that fish and seafood stew has to cook for about 15 minutes. In the meantime, we're gonna get started on the achake, which is one of the national dishes, the foundations of Ivorian cuisine. It's clay pot, which they're heating up now. It's called acheke. It's made from cassava in little beads. It's, there's a process where it's dried, where it's uh, steamed. steamed. There's a whole process, which we're going to see later on. But then one of the common ways to eat it is drizzled with palm oil. Give it that orange color, and then she just massages it in. Nice. <laughs> 
Okay. Thank you, merci, Chef Emanuela, for, for preparing this. And the dish is actually called soup de pêcher. And pêcher means fisher. Uh, so it's actually the soup of the fishers. It includes kind of like all the different seafoods that were freshly caught, made into a soup, like a stew. And like a lot of tomatoes, chilies, and onions that go into the recipe and then all of the fresh seafood that we got from the market. Vas-y. So we're gonna... Oh, there's fish, there's lobster, there's the octopus and the shrimp in here. And the slipper lobster. Oh, starting off with some of that, some, some of the fish. And the traditional way will be to eat from these clay bowls together. Yeah, together. Very yeah, cool. Add some of that food. broth. Yeah, on the edge, okay. Yeah. Okay. And then okay. both together. <laughs> bon appétit. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the food, the, the happy fish. <laughs> C'est bon. <laughs> Merci. <laughs> mm. The freshness of the seafood, the, I love the texture of that cassava. It's like little beads that are kind of moist and sticky all at the same time yet fluffy and dense. And then you got the fish, you've got the tartness of the tomatoes and the onions in there. Very good. Mm -hmm. I do want to chase with a little bit of that chili. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Oh, that's amazing flavor. Oh, mm. okay. That's spicy. It goes up your nose a little bit. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna move into that. That slipper lobster, fully hydrate that. I think I'm just gonna bite into it. I'm trying to scoop that out. Oh. Oh, wow, that slipper lobster. Oh, it's so sweet. So silky in texture. And whenever seafood is cooked in a soup like this, it just keeps so juicy and like retains the, I mean, it just absorbs all of that broth. Awesome. Oh yeah? Very good. Oh, so juicy. Oh, slipper lobster, so good. Oh, slipper lobster is excellent. Oh, I'm gonna try some of these, these fresh shrimp. Mm. Is this a dish that's common all over the it's, soup de, it's soup common, de bechet? It's common it? in Côte d'Ivoire. It's more, more common in the southern part of the country because of the closeness to the, to, the, to the ocean. And then on the flip side, on the northern part of the country, you, got, you get more of a meat, it's more of a meat base. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna move into the other lobsters. These are like the, the rock lobsters. And I'll put this over onto the, put it over onto the acheke. Yeah. Scoop it out. Oh, 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 look at the row. Yeah. Rehydrate it. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Maybe add a little bit, a little bit of chili. Yes, I think we'll, <laughs> yeah. we'll do a topper. Maybe I'll go with the green. Yeah, the green one. The green one this bite. Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh, it's a mouthful of lobster. Mm, and that chili just pops in your mouth so bright, and that one is citrusy. Mm. The muscular texture of the lobster. Oh yeah. That was a nice meal, just sitting under the coconut trees. Um, Cote d'Ivoire is just such a beautiful country. The culture, the food, the varieties. And I'll have the information in the description box below everywhere that we went. I wanna say a big thank you to my friend Mo from Belle Cote d'Ivoire 
who does food tours, he does cultural tours, and he's just a, a great guy to be with when you're here. So thank you very much for watching this video. We have a lot more to cover, a lot more places, destinations, traveling around Cote d'Ivoire, and a lot of delicious food coming up that you're not gonna wanna miss. So stay tuned, remember to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, leave a comment below, I'd love to hear from you. And if you're not already subscribed, make sure you subscribe now for lots more food and travel videos. Thanks again for watching, goodbye from San Pedro, Cote d'Ivoire, and I will see you on the next video. Thank you.